Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am in front of Lambeth Palace, London. So this is the residence of the Archbishop of Canterbury. The Archbishop is the uh, senior priest in England. Uh, Saint Augustine of Hippo uh, was sent by the Pope to this country to bring Christianity. He'd seen um, English slaves um, in uh, Rome and he was asked, where are these people from, these blonde haired people? And they were told they were Angles. People of England were sometimes called Angles. Really the Angles had invaded um, in the 5th century uh, BC from what's now Germany in the Netherlands. And he said they're not Angles, they're angels. Anyway, so St. Augustine crossed over here uh, to spread the gospel. And uh, back then England was divided into several kingdoms. And he landed in Kent, the southeast corner of England, so the nearest bit to mainland Europe. And he converted the King of Kent to Christianity. And uh, the King of Kent, uh, he granted some land for the first uh, church to be erected. It was built in wood at Canterbury. So the county of Kent and the city of Canterbury are related. Kent, Kent, get it? And that was rebuilt many times in stone. It's now Canterbury Cathedral. So that's why Canterbury is the religious capital of England, whereas London is the political capital. And the Archbishop of Canterbury is the senior priest. Obviously, this was a Catholic country for centuries, and there was only one type of Christianity. Then, about 1533, Henry VIII, um, he... Uh, disestablished the Roman Catholic Church here. He established the Church of England. You can call people who believe in the Church of England Anglicans. Um, and then so the Archbishop of Canterbury was the head of the Anglican Church, well under the monarch. The monarch is the supreme governor of the Church of England. So yeah, this has been the residence of the Archbishop of Canterbury since mid the Middle Ages. You can see the stonework there. It's uh, late uh, 15th century, but it was extensively redone in the 19th century. Um, so despite his title relating to Canterbury, he spends most of his time up here. Now, England is divided into two provinces uh, for ecclesiastical purposes. The southern province, which also includes Wales, is uh, presided over by the Archbishop of Canterbury. The northern province is presided over by the Archbishop of York. Of the two, Canterbury is senior. So sometimes uh, someone has served as Archbishop of York and later been promoted to be Archbishop of Canterbury. Um, so that's that. Then there's the Anglican Communion. All the churches which were founded from the 16th century around the world as copies of the Church of England are part of the Anglican Communion, like a community. And every 10 years they have the Lambeth Palace Conference. They meet here. They don't always meet entirely in the building because it's not sufficiently big for them, but that's what it's called. So um, these churches are Anglican churches, or you can say Episcopalian, because Episcopus in um, ancient Greek is bishop and they are ruled by bishops. Most Protestant churches do not have bishops, and the Church of Scotland does not. Um, so uh, what else? But they're, they're relatively high in ritual Anglican churches. Is the Anglican church a Protestant one or not? That's debatable. Some Anglicans would say, yes, I'm a Protestant. Others say, no, they're not. Some say they're Catholics, but they're not Roman Catholics, since the Pope in Rome is not the head of their church. It's the monarch here is the head of their church. So Anglican churches around the world, they tend to take the name of their country or group of countries, um, as in the Anglican Church of Australia, the Episcopalian Church of the United States, the Anglican Church of Canada. Some of them have got the word Anglican and others don't. In India, it's divided into two, the Church of North India, the Church of South India. There's the Church of Pakistan and so on, despite the fact that very few Pakistanis are Christians, let alone members of that church. Um, then they lump several pro uh, church countries together and call them a province. So curiously a province can mean several countries, not just one. The Church of the Province of Central Africa, the Church of the Province of West Africa, and so forth. So it co covers many countries around the globe. Um, and it, so he, the, the, the um, Archbishop of Canterbury is primus inter pares. The current incumbent is the Reverend Justin Welby. So um, other Protestant churches, Presbyterians, Methodists, Baptists and so on, don't have bishops and archbishops. They think it's too similar to Catholicism. Uh, the Church of England says, let's not show the, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Not everything about Catholicism is bad. And the Church of England is a broad church, as in some are very high Anglican, very similar to Roman Catholics in their style of worship, wanting to call their priest's father, talking about mass, sacraments and so forth. Some are very low church, really emphasise the centrality of the Bible, and they believe they should have minimal ceremony and not too much artwork and 
uh, emphasise simplicity and perhaps an element of Puritanism, Puritanism, maybe even biblical literalism in their worship. And there are people who are somewhere in the middle. So the idea is the Church of England should be available for um, Christians of almost any point of view. Um, so that's that. We stand hard by the Thames. It's just behind me. And you can see the Houses of Parliament not too far over there, maybe not very obvious to you from that angle, on the skyline. And there's a garden of the Archbishop of Canterbury, and that's where Jeremy Thorpe had his wedding reception, who was a, a very uh, eager member of the Church of England. And here is this ancient church, which was going to be demolished in the 60s, but was saved. It is now a guard museum. So that's all for the moment from, for the, uh, from Lambeth Palace and the very reverend, uh, what's his name, uh, Curry, is it Michael Curry, who uh, gave that very memorable and exuberant sermon at the wedding of Prince Harry and Miss Meghan Markle. He stayed here with the Archbishop of Canterbury before the wedding.